Hello there everybody and welcome back to Movie Squirm. Today I'm going to be ranking 8 new horror releases that came out in the month of October 2023. Now I did want to get this video out a little bit sooner but I was just having trouble with my microphone for some reason. A few little setbacks here and there but I do think it's better late than never so... I do apologize for that. I usually do these videos in short form. This is only about three or four releases usually that I watch in the months that go by. But this month, because it was Halloween and stuff, we did have eight new releases. So I'm going to be talking about them from the worst to the best. I know this video is late, but I still wanted to do it anyway. I, you know, I really want to get my feelings out on these movies here. And I didn't have a big chance to review them because of some personal issues that just came up. But let's just get into it now. In 8th place, the worst movie out of all these films. So number 8 is going to be Dark Harvest. And this is a movie I really thought I was going to like. Especially with the cool sound and concept. Now this is based on a best-selling novel, I believe. And this sees this town that is kind of cursed every Halloween by this sort of figure that comes out of the cornfields in the shape of sort of like a scarecrow type monster <laughs> and the townsfolk have to stop it getting to the church otherwise the town will be even more cursed forever and these group of boys these teenagers in high school you know girls aren't allowed to participate in this they all want to kill this thing before it reaches the church and become the new hero of the town for that year so even if they kill the damn thing it's still going to come back next year but they've got to stop it reaching its destination to unleash even more havoc for the rest of the year not just on this halloween night and i thought that was a really cool interesting concept and the film focuses around this young boy whose brother won it the year before so he wants to go out and prove to his family that his brother isn't just you know the the, the special kid you know the the, the you know the, the one who's got all the strength and you know the the important kid in the family if you like he wants to prove that he's just as good as his brother so he sets out to kill this damn thing now this movie like i said started off okay but it kind of just fizzled out for me it just had so many unlikable characters in this movie i kind of didn't really care about anyone in the town by the end of the film because everyone was just being horrible to one another and i mean in some evil spirited ways as well it's not just a bit of name calling here and there you know there's a little bit of violence inflicted on people and stuff because everyone wants to be number one and there's adults who are kind of forcing their kids to go out and do this i just couldn't get on board with you know liking any of these characters to be honest and it really brought the story down for me and it just totally took me out of it. Now, the monster kind of looked good, even though it was the CGI thing. But I'm not usually a fan of CGI at all. But I think they've done okay with this. There were some cool kills in there and stuff. But my God, the story doesn't half over convolute itself with trying one too many things. And there were so many rules and stuff thrown in here. And I just kind of didn't know where it wanted to go towards the end of the movie. It just became way over ambitious for its own good and it just fell flat on its face unfortunately so yeah i really wanted to like this one but unfortunately dark harvest was the worst movie released this month i wouldn't say it's one of the worst movies i've seen this year but it's definitely on the back end of my entire ranking for the year that's for certain but i've seen worse so that is dark harvest Coming up in 7th place, we do have The Exorcist Believer. Ah, yes, I had a little bit of high hopes with this, with Ellen Burstyn coming back in the trailers. I mean, I just thought, oh, this is going to be another demonic possession movie. But her coming back made me think, hmm, there might be something here. And David Gordon Green made two out of, good th three, two out of three good movies with his Halloween trilogy. Yes, I'm a fan of Halloween Ends, and I do like Halloween 2018. Halloween Kills, not so much. but. I just thought, you know, maybe this could work, but unfortunately it is one of them generic demonic possession movies in the end, which just got Exorcist in the title, and Ellen Burstyn makes a bit of a cameo, if you like. I wouldn't say this is a fully-fledged return like Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween 2018 or anything. 
And the character is totally wasted. It's kind of the disservice to that character. After her being so strong in the in the first Exorcist movie, I, in my review, I said she was the best thing about that film, one of the biggest positives. But this movie is just follows these two young girls who go missing in the woods. And they come back three days later and they're acting very strange because obviously they've been possessed. And I thought that was an interesting concept to have two girls possessed instead of one. But it quickly loses any novelty if it had any. And we just have a very slow build up for, till the final act. Now, I've gone on record to say I kind of do like slow build ups in horror movies these days, but this one really really did take its time i mean it moves at an absolute snail's pace it's not very interesting leading up to anything and by the third act it's just possessed girls throwing their arms about and screaming and like you get in all of them demonic possession movies i seen the pope's exorcist earlier in this year and it kind of reminded me of that film the way the kid was just going ah! it does nothing for me that to me is not scary it's just it's like someone picked a script up who sent it in a few years ago and they went, oh, what's this? We could turn this into an Exorcist title if we really wanted to and make a lot of money. It just seems like a weird decision from Blumhouse to buy the rights to this franchise, plan a trilogy, and this one has actually fell on its face at the box office. So not a very good start at all. And I wasn't a massive fan of this. If you want to see my full thoughts, I've done a full review for this on the channel. I'll leave it in the link down below. But for me, this is... I'd like to say a huge disappointment, but did I really hold any hope until I seen Ellen Burstyn coming back? It's probably a movie that should never have been touched. I watched the entire franchise of this. I'll leave my ranking down below as well, and it's a very, very rough franchise to get through. There are some terrible sequels and prequels in here, and the Exorcist Believer did it no favours whatsoever. Leslie, is it Leslie Odom Jr., I think the main protagonist was? He was the best thing about this film. The guy can act. Unfortunately, he wasn't given too much good material to work with, but he'd done a job here for what he had. I would like to see him in more future, more movies in future because, yeah, I think the guy has got talent. But unfortunately, the ex believer, yeah, just a very, very bland demonic possession movie like we get every few months. Number six is going to be Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Now, I was actually really looking forward to this when they announced it and they said it was going to come out three months down the line. I had no idea this was even coming out because I'm a bit of a Pet Cemetery fan. I rewatched the remake as well leading up to this and that changed my mind a little bit. You know, I, I think I found a new life for that film after being initially disappointed with it at the cinema and that is a prequel. This is a prequel to that remake and this sees Judd Crandall played by Jackson White, I believe his name is, who is basically going through the Timmy Bateman story. Now, if you don't remember that, it, it's kind of the first human who is buried at this pet cemetery. This guy who was in the army comes home, or he, I think he was killed in the army. His dad buries him at the cemetery, and he comes back and starts to wreak havoc on the town, and the townsfolk don't take too kindly for that. And it was a five-minute story in the original Pet Cemetery that Fred Gwynn's character, Drew Crandall, told. And that's just been elongated here to 90 minutes. My big problem with this is it feels like a very vanilla prequel. It's just very narrow and linear. There's not really anything coming in from left field. It's a story we know the outcome of. And it was more exciting hearing Judd tell it, really, with that five-minute subplot in the original movie than what we get here. Now, there's a little bit of gore in here for gore hounds. You know, the guy who played Timmy Beatum, I'm really sorry I forgot his name. He'd done a great job. He was probably the biggest positive of this movie. A very sinister character who just wants to prod their other characters and, you know sort of cause trouble everywhere he goes and as the movie goes on you know it does get a little bit more out of hand but it's just a blah movie like there, there was nothing really here for me Jug Crandall it didn't feel like watching Jug Crandall at all it was just like this guy playing this guy <laughs> and Jug Crandall is a great character but I just wasn't invested in this version of him at all the third act elevates slightly but then it just feels like the most bland action-packed third act of any action-packed 
third act of the year, if you like. I mean, like I said, it's elevated, but it's just nothing too exciting, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, the movie was just okay. I would watch it again, I suppose, but it's definitely the weakest of the Pet Cemetery films, and one that feels like it wasn't quite needed. There was a five-minute detour that explains the origins of the cemetery and how it all came about. I appreciated that, but everything else, you kind of know where it's going and became very predictable. So that is Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Coming up in fifth place, we have Five Nights at Freddy's, a movie that has done exceptionally well at the box office. And this is his video game adaptation. Now, I have, I'm have i a huge video gamer, but I have just never played Five Nights at Freddy's. I kind of watched a couple of videos on it on YouTube leading up to this movie just to see what it was all about. And it looks like it's just this guy in the room and he's moving from left to right and pushing a few buttons. I don't know if that game is going to be for me, <laughs> to be honest. But this sees Josh Hutchinson, who plays this security guard, and he has been hired by Matthew Lillard, who you remember from Scream 1, to be a security guard at this rest at this pizzeria called Freddy's. And I think he's got to watch over it for five nights, hence the name Five Nights at Freddy's. And each night it gets a little bit more difficult for him to stay there because of these murderous puppets that are walking around and inhabit the area <laughs> it's a very very strange movie in the third act like it's a little bit more than that i just think the movie felt like a tiny bit of a mess when we got to that third act and now everything is explained everything leading up to that was kind of okay i was kind of on board with it but the problems do seep out in the third act. Now, Five Nights at Freddy's fans might be shouting at the screen here and just saying that's what it's meant to be. Fine. I just don't know if that works in movie form for newcomers. I don't know. Maybe if I played the game, I would have seen it differently. But there's some dodgy acting in here. I thought the child actress wasn't great. The woman who plays the police officer, not the greatest either. And Josh Hutcherton was doing really well in the movie. But when it gets to the third act and he starts to have to be a bit of an emotional, angry character, you could just tell that, oh, the, the, the acting there isn't great. <laughs> There's also a very predictable twist that came along in the movie as well that I seen coming pretty much from the start. And even these kills that happen are kind of off screen. What? I had a little bit of fun with this movie. I think I gave it 3 out of 5 on Letterboxd. It was a fun enough time. It was a very, very easy watch. <laughs> it was okay. I didn't love it. It was just okay. But I've heard Five Nights at Freddy's fans are really happy with this movie, so I'm happy for you lot as well. So in fifth place is Five Nights at Freddy's. Coming in at fourth place, we do have VHS 85. Now, I wasn't looking forward to this too much because I watched VHS 99 last year, and that was the only VHS movie I've seen until this one. And I thought it was a little bit of a boring movie, really. Some of the stories just weren't really hitting home for me. However, this was a much vast improvement on that film for me. I found this movie very sinister you know very creepy at times and something that made me think afterwards so we've got a few stories here one of them sees these characters who are just on a lake on a speedboat having a little bit of fun in the lake and this sniper starts to attack them really won't say too much more than that and then we have like a disaster story where something evil is making this disaster happen and stuff like that and that was all cool following this fire i think it was like a firefighter team as they try and get out of this building as this big earthquake is happening then we had this other one where it was like a vr thing like one of the very first vr inventions and how this woman was acting on stage this vr equipment and people were watching and then it went into something else I thought that was kind of cool as well. Then we have this fourth story involving this family, which links to the first story. That was definitely the most interesting part of this entire VHS movie for me. I liked how they linked. I didn't see it coming. I thought that was awesome. And the fifth one, which is probably 
the most sinister of the stories was seeing this these murders happening in this house and this guy is sending the videotapes to the police officers in the police station and i've got to kind of look at it and investigate it some sinister stuff in there but i liked how the outcome played out i think that could have worked as a fully fledged movie but i had a good time with this one obviously some stories are weaker than the others but for me I enjoyed this a hell of a lot more than VHS 99, and I will be checking the next one out, definitely. So that is VHS 85. Coming in in third place, we have When Evil Lurks. I heard a lot of praise about this movie, so as soon as it dropped on Shudder, I decided to give it a go. Now, this is a demonic possession movie, but it ain't like The Exorcist. It's not your generic, everyday demonic possession movie. So basically, we see this these characters in this town, and there is someone who's possessed, and they've been possessed for a while now. And these people called cleaners are sent to kill these demons, but the, the, the cleaner is killed on the way there, so they don't know what to do with this demon. It's kind of a known thing around the world that people may get possessed here and there, but they just get dealt with by these cleaners. However, when the cleaner is taken out, these two characters decide to just drop this demon off at the other end of town, like three miles out of town or whatever, and just think nothing of it. But that is the worst thing they could have done, and this thing starts to spread a little bit. Now, I don't want to say too much more than that. You'd bef definitely better going into this movie blind. But it was a very interesting take on the demonic possession genre, subgenre, that I haven't seen done like this before. The movie has some what the fuck moments and some really, you know, you just don't see some of these things coming. The movie goes for it in some scenes with the death of certain characters, the the, the vulgarness of it, the evil spiritness of it, if you like. There is some really heavy scene in this let's say especially one moment where this character pulls up to a possessed character walking down the road and what she is doing there is something to behold i was like holy shit and the look on the character's face in that movie when he sees it is horrifying the third act for me i, I just kind of Wish it played out a little bit better. There are a lot of rules here. Not even the third act. It's more like the last 10 minutes. But there's a lot of rules here as well as to what you can do with these demons, why you shouldn't kill them in certain ways, which were sort of overlapping each other a little bit. I was like, mm, the, so what can they do here? What are they not allowed to do? And some of the character decisions in this movie were frustrating. I think some of the characters could have made better decisions. It carries some horror traits where characters don't make the best judgments of <laughs> situations really and decide to do the wrong thing and it's like no if you do that you know what's going to happen so please don't and they do it anyway but overall i had a lot of fun with this movie I, well fun is the wrong word i was invested in this really dark tale if you like film makeup design as well at times and it was an interesting movie. I definitely think if you're a horror fan, you should check this out because it's something totally different. So in third place is When Evil Licks. In second place, we do have Totally Killer. Now I've heard very mixed things on this movie, but I was definitely on the high end of the spectrum. But I've heard people say they absolutely hated this film. So I do suppose it all comes down to your maybe your type of humor and what you like in a movie this does follow along the lines of movies like babysitter killer queen freaky happy death day it's that type of vibe that we get here but i thought this was a very interesting concept and one that should probably be explored a little bit more often at times so this sees this killer who killed three people in the 80s and then never got heard of again since 35 years later, he has come back and started to wreak havoc again. And he kills this girl's mother, the main protagonist of the movie. So she ends up going back in time to try and stop him in the 80s where he started this killing spree. And I thought that was just a really cool concept. It uses a lot of Back to the Future vibes. And it, it, is it even stated in this movie? She's going around going, look, I'm in the movie Back to the Future. So it's Back to the Future with a horror slasher subgenre thrown in there, if you like. Now, 
I just had a lot of fun with this movie. I loved some of the dialogue in this, like where she goes to meet her older mother in the eighties, and she's like this teenager, and her mother is horrible. Like she's just one of the mean girls in the school, if you like, and she's just telling her to go f off and die and all this. I was laughing my ass off, but. There are some really cool kills in here as well. Like, it goes for it with the violence a little bit and stuff. The killer did look a little bit, a little bit silly, I suppose. But just throughout this movie, me and my wife just had a really fun time with it. It carries a fun vibe. It's just an entertaining movie from start to finish. It was a little bit predictable at the end. I would say half predictable. And then something else I didn't see coming, which I thought was kind of clever. But... For me, this is just a, one of the funnest movies I've seen all year, and I just had a really, really good time with it. Like I said, it's not going to be for everyone. It does definitely cater to certain styles, but for me, it totally worked. Excuse the pun. So in second place, is totally killer. Coming in in first place, though, is going to be Hell House LLC, The Carmichael Manor. Now, this is a prequel to a... 2016 movie i believe i think it's 2016 called hell house llc and it has actually spawned two sequels so there's four of these damn things now but i am a huge fan of the original hell house llc not so much the sequel haven't seen the third one yet because I, that sequel just kind of put me off and the third one looks awful i've heard bad things i will get it watched one day but when this prequel come out i just thought you know what? i really really want to watch this and I'm happy to report that this was on par, again, with the original. It's picked the franchise back up a little bit there. But the biggest positive I can give this movie is that this is one of the scariest films I have ever seen in my life. I am not someone who is scared by movies very often at all. And it's once in a blue moon that these films might come along and actually send shivers up my spine. Believe it or not, the last one to do this was the original Hell House. And even though that might just be a slightly better overall movie, this one is definitely more scary in my opinion. There was some edgy or seat stuff in this film and me and my wife were just absolutely terrified. Like I was literally hiding behind a pillow at times. I couldn't quite believe how much this movie throws at you. So basically this follows these ghost hunters who go and investigate this manor called the Carmichael Manor because this family of four or five, two of them were killed and the other ones disappeared in the 1989. So there, loads of weird stuff's happened there over the years. So these three ghost hunters go to stay there for a, about a week and so many weird things just start to happen there. But my God, man, some of them are just, just really some of the freakiest things I've seen in a movie you know ever really <laughs> this is a found footage film so if that is not your bag this may not work for you although it's not really a shaky cam type of deal it's very pristine film and stuff you know it looks like it's filmed with a 4k camera and stuff like that and there's some very clever directing in here not just the scare scenes well yes mainly the scare scenes but the way it's done in different ways like the peter and round corners and then these long hallway scenes but then there's this other scene where it's on like a laptop and this woman is doing a zoom call and then something is happening in the background and i was like oh my god what's gonna what's the outcome gonna be here it just really does go for the juggler this movie does not allow you to breathe in the scare scenes as well it's relentless like we have a little 20, 25 minute build up and then we get into it and then it just goes from there to there to there. I mean, it's not like you're going to get a scare scene and then 20 minutes to calm down. It's just one after the other. The movie does not stop. And I was, I was really on edge on my seat here. And I, you know what? I appreciate any movie that can do that for me. This might not be the same for everyone else people are scared by different things it is subjective kind of like comedy is but for me this scared the crap out of me this is found footage done very effectively and for me i gotta put it number one on this list and this is one of my favorite horror movies of the year so in the first place is hell house llc the carmichael manor 
Okay, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this ranking video of my October movies. Like I said, sorry it was a little bit late. What are your thoughts on these movies? What would you rank these films? Are there any movies I missed in October that I should check out? Please let me know. And don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if horror is your sort of thing. And if you want to see more rankings, they'll be in the link down below, along with the Exorcist Believer review and the Exorcist ranking. Thanks so much, guys. You all take care, and I'll see you on the next video.